Hey folks, another camping episode. This time, oh it's heavy. I've, uh, I've bought a new tent. It's a British Army officer's World War II tent. It's really heavy. This is not a lightweight backpacking trip. As you can see, my bag's not packed very well. It's the first time I've used this tent. I'm looking forward to setting it up. We've got a real mixture of gear. We are pretty much the beginning of autumn. It's gonna be a lovely evening. There's some rain in the forecast too. <laughs> Let's go camping. I've never set this up before, so I've got no idea what I'm doing. There seems to be some poles here, but they're all still wrapped. That shows you I've not used it at all. There's some wood, nice wood pegs here, all made by the company that I bought it from. Okay. More wrapping. A male and a female end so I'm guessing it's like a ferrule on a fishing rod it just slots in there that's the spike which I'm I think is going to go that way up to hold the canvas I don't know yet just sticking the poles together as I go I like the color like khaki color I'm gonna face the entrance to the camera no instructions nothing it's World War II British officers style tent but made newer, like a modern one made from that style. I'm guessing that's the ridge pole because there's little holes here and I think these holes sit on top of, whoopsie, of the spikes. I'm, I'm totally guessing this, there's no instructions, but I think that should sit on the spike. Yeah, like that. Oh. Okay. I kind of need to push it that way more because as I fold that up, I want the middle to be here. I have a feeling this bit's going to be really tough to keep it upright. So these spikes go through the kind of center, the center of the ridge pole is there of the door. So I'm just trying to get it all spiked up first through the holes of these rivets. Like that. And just hope that it all stays together as I lift it. Nice centre guy line. I got a feeling the tent as I lift it up, because it's got no triangular legs, it's just gonna fall over again. So what I'm gonna do is try and um, peg out the inside of the the other side of the guy lines. I just wonder if it might help if I do them super tight to begin with. So I've kind of started it. I, there's probably guys out there that are watching my films who have these tents and know how to set them up. So for my first time doing this type of tent, it's tricky, but I think now I've got a rough, now it's staying upright. I think I can just keep adjusting each skyline, moving the pegs until I get it nice and tight. <laughs> we'll see. Um, this one. looking a bit better. So there, there, there are these smaller tent stakes that come with it. The bigger ones I've used for the guy lines and these smaller ones I'm just going to use to peg the base of the wall of the tent down. I'm guessing that's what they're for. So 
So this is the back of the tent, but it can also be made the front from the looks of it. It's got the same rope as the front does, it's just this one's been tied off. Really well to be fair. It's actually kind of stitched together, but I'm guessing it can be undone because there's these little tie outs here which can hold the wall of the tent as you roll it up like again like you would a modern tent and that should hold there and the same the other side so you can have it get more airflow and have a back door and the front door is that now doors can open like that you can roll them tie them up And there we have it. The tent, the army officer's tent is set up. It's really quite spacious inside. I am a, I'm a small guy, five foot seven and a bit. And as I'm stood up, my head just, just touches the top of the pole. Benefits of being small. If I stand here, you can almost see that's where the ridge pole is. It just brushes my cap. Ideal, I can stand up in the tent. This is the inside of the tent. Just check. Everything feels pretty secure. Here's the two vents. One there, you can see outside to the woods. Beautiful view, one there. And then there's this kind of hessian skirt, which I've got on the inside at the moment. I don't know if that's meant to go on the outside or the inside. I would have thought the inside, because it's hessian, it's not great if it's wet. Normally a skirt on the tent can go on the outside and you can weigh it down with, with rocks and things to keep it secure. But this one looks like it should go on the inside. Um, you guys will know who have your tent, but I'm just going to bring that skirt in. Getting it sticks up the way. This looks cosy, boys. Very cosy. Yeah, I'm guessing there's a toggle there. Not sure. Nothing on the other side. Hmm, not sure about that toggle and what that's meant to do, to be honest. It, it doesn't lead anywhere. It kind of goes. Oh, it's there. Ah, okay. So here's the toggles from the outside there. I'm guessing they're just to stake your door down. Your back, the back door. So two stakes there, so I'm going to try that. Yeah, now it's not moving. So as this is a mixture of, of kind of old school gear and modern gear, this camp out because I'm just testing the tent really because I've got future plans for it. Um, I'm just going to use one of the raised beds, the modern kind of one tigress ones, which I've used before, but it just makes life a bit more comfortable in there. It all kind of, it's all, this bed's all on like these elastic bungees, like that, and it all, it's really easy to put together. I like it because it's simple and it's solid, but it, I just like the fact that all the parts don't fly away every day. They also, if you get struggle to put them up, they've got instructions in the bag itself, attached to the bag itself, just to kind of give you a hand if you if you do forget how to put it together. Oh, sort of uh, horizontal, well, vertical sections. These are the arms. Again, all easy to attach. That's one. Another small bag, bag inside a bag. These are the legs. And then if you remember the old army cot beds where you used to have to get on those metal 
legs and bend them in and then pull the canvas over with your fingers and it was so tight this simple little invention is awesome so at the end where the pole is there's just a pull tab here to get your finger in and give you the pressure to be able to pull the material over the pole and it makes life so much easier and then you just lay this over for now these little legs then have this adjustable section here with these two pieces that you push in and it clicks into place and that's how you get your tension so you have to get it slack to begin with so you put the leg facing closer in and you do that on all the legs like that clip the other sides in and then just to tighten them you just clip this in there and use the lever use the lever and it clicks and it gives you the tension in the bed yes it does just a lightweight sleeping pad It was uh, given to me by a guy at one of the shows this year and it's a sleeping bag but it's a really unique one I have taken it out and had a look at it and stuff at home but it's it's called a I think this is pronounced right a Grootsy Groot bag Grootsy bag um, it's unique in the sense that it's actually a synthetic and wool mix a mixture of synthetic material and wool this is the summer sort of summer version uh, has a comfort range of four degrees Celsius limit is minus one degree Celsius and the extreme is minus 17 degrees Celsius so it's definitely more of a sort of summer bag spring summer autumn we are experiencing really mild temperatures at the moment it's uh, 16 degrees today my favorite bit of this bag already is that there's this zip segment at the bottom of the base where your feet are with some mesh and I don't know about you, but I get really sweaty feet at night. So it's really nice to be able to have a breathable mesh section for your feet, which will also help with the bacteria inside of it and, and the, the odor that it would give off over time. Um, it really helps to prevent that. So it's nice and airy for your feet. And obviously in the colder months, if you wanna zip it up, you can zip it up. But I do really like that. And I've not personally seen that before in a sleeping bag. Normally sleeping bags have it just straight down the side, but this, I've tried this out and it makes it so much easier getting in and out the bag. So it opens really well, still keeps its shape. Let me take my shoes off for a minute. It just means when you go to reach for your zip, sometimes you're having to faff around down the side to find it, but it's right on the top of your bag, which is really easy to, to sort of find. The other thing is, and I know this is advertised on loads of sleeping bags, is the zips always get caught. And you know, a lot of sleeping bags are like anti-zip snag technology. This one just has a really simple like cotton baffle thing and a, a wide Y-shaped zip, which really genuinely does not snag as much as a normal bag does. I mean, look. How rare is that to get that on a sleeping bag? I like that. So anyway, the rest is, is fairly, fairly normal. You've got an outside pocket here on your chest for mobile phones and things like that. Again, it's attached to you, but it's sort of to the side. It's easy to get in and out rather than the pocket on the inside. There is a special pocket on the inside, which is just a Velcro one. Again, for a mobile phone, it's got all the washing details in there. And then it's got your kind of normal baffle here around the neck and your adjustable hood, the mummy shaped hood which you get in sort of most sleeping bags. Lastly, let me just show you this, this final thing, because this is really cool. This bottom section of the sleeping bag, there's something inside and there's a zip. And then out pops <laughs> this mesh mosquito net, which I have never seen this before in a sleeping bag. And what you do is it's got a zip just here. And this zip attaches to this section just, I think it's here. 
zips round like that. And then you've got these this tube that comes with it. There's two tubes already in, and that's that's so it can fold up. You just insert this other final tube. This basically raises the head net above your head, the mosquito net above your head. Don't get any bugs on you, which is super cool. There you go. Now you have a sleeping bag with a mosquito net above you, so you can sleep out under the stars in the summer and not have any bugs bother you. Oh, that zip is so good. And then, <laughs> this is the cool bit. You might look a bit strange, but it's not about looks because to, to have a mosquito net attached to a sleeping bag like this, I just think that's a really good addition. The fact that you don't have to have it on as well. And I could, I'm literally looking out above the trees now, up at the trees and through the leaves. And if it's still 16 degrees, so there are bugs around. I'm not going to use this tonight though, because I'm in the tent and I, I don't really need it. But For sleeping out in the open or in a really buggy area, I think that's a really good invention. Fair play to that, whatever they're called. I think it's group C. Fair play to them for diversifying there, something that's been around for years, put their own touch on it. I like that. Anyway, I'll put a link to it in the description. I don't get any kickback or anything from it. The guy just gave it to me and said, give it a go, see what you think. If you don't like it, tell us. And when you don't want to use it, just pull out that piece that was in there. And then it folds up into this circle. Like that. It just goes into this small section at the back of your sleeping sleeping bag, bag case. Can't even talk. And there you go, it stores in there. One more feature which I do think is awesome is on the underside of it, it's got three of these grippy, these grip sections, like rubbery bits, and they, they go all along the bottom of the, the base of it so that you don't skid off of your sleeping mat on, the, on your sleeping pad and it stays there and grips rather than sliding off your pad all the time. Very cool. Right, we need to get a fire going and get some food on. So running out of light, decided to chop some wood off camera. Uh, and I might go for like an upside down fire lay, which I've done before. Because I'm cooking in a little mini Dutch oven tonight. And so I want to I want to keep this fire nice and, and hot, ideally. So I'm gonna build it up. Using a barbecue fire lighter for this one. No bushcraft, no pure bushcraft stuff. I've done this in my channel before, but essentially the fire burns from the top down and it it's a low maintenance fire. You really don't have to touch it once it's lit. And that's my plan, so I can go and gather some more firewood while this is kind of burning down. There we go. Build a little raft, set some twigs on it, and hopefully that's it. I won't have to touch that now for probably about 45 minutes to an hour. I can let that go. That fire is burning, it's going to get the kettle warm next to it. Before I put the trivet on later. Got some long pieces of ash here which I've, I've found split up earlier. That I'd done on a previous overnight. So, I don't know why but I want to try it this way. <laughs> like Indian teepee style and see if that makes it any difference. I've sort of never really done it that way, so we'll see what happens. See what see how it goes. There you go. Three or four breaths. And have a pillow. Didn't really bring a peeler with me for these uh, 
sweet potatoes, but a bushcraft knife shall suffice for now. Just trying to keep as much of the potato as possible. Fire is still burning well. Uh, it's 45 minutes later, so that's good. So, fire's still not low enough for the Dutch oven, but it's getting there. But it is good enough for a cup of coffee. Like I said, this trivet's a bit big, but it's uh, you can still make it work. There's some heat to that fire now, so the ash that I split was a bit wet. Well, I say a bit wet. It had some moisture in it. It wasn't wet. And now I can feel that, that the heat has, has evaporated all that moisture out. So now the fire is actually properly going. Oh look, it's nearly boiling already, the kettle. As is my microphone. Dice these up a bit. Sweet potato and onion. We're just getting to dusk now, and that's six o'clock, 10 past six. The clocks haven't changed yet, so soon it will be dark at about four. Bushcraft knives with a Scandi grind are so hard to cut vegetables. Normally I use my open owl because it's thin. Butchers it a bit, but it's all going down the hatch. I haven't lit my one of these in ages. My fewer hand lantern, this has been a long time. Hopefully it still works. Yes, it does. There is some fuel in there still. The glass is a bit dirty, I need to clean it, but result. This is going to be a full meal. It's half an hour, 40 minutes. Right, spices. Straight from the wife's cupboard, so don't tell her. A bit of turmeric. A bit of cumin. Coriander, chuck in a bit of mixed spice as well, and then because I don't want that to dry out, I'm just going to add some chopped tomatoes just to give it a bit more of a sauce to kind of cook in. Oh, look at that, it's literally on the rim almost, there's enough room for it to bubble away. I know you shouldn't, people say, oh, you shouldn't use like rich acidic tomato sauces in a Dutch oven. But I've never had a problem as long as you clean it and rinse it out soon after. I've personally not had a problem with it. It's when you like leave the uh, sauce in there. I've got my gloves, so I'm using my tripod sleeve on my arm to, uh, to move things and adjust things. Not the best, but... Oh, it does the job, just. Right, that's ready for the lid. Nice, there we go. And then I'll just rotate the whole oven every 10 minutes or so, so it cooks evenly. Something I did forget was a bit of stock. Totally forgot. So, oh, 
Where's that? Ah, oh, still hot, steaming. Taking it off the uh, the fire. Just about see it there, but it's looking it's looking good. Still piping hot because it's cast iron. But it tastes brilliant. So to accompany that, by the way, I really like this 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 one person Dutch oven. I've actually got a smaller one than this, which is more for kind of puddings and raclette cheeses or camembert cheeses and things like that. But that is ideal for winter one pot wonders. I'm really pleased with that. I guess now it's winter, it's more the time for those types of dishes. So I've got some sourdough bread to go with. Is that focusing? Yeah, look at that. Sourdough bread to go with this dish because it, it, it's just, it just works. That's what I can say, it works. Just load up the bread with a bit of that. <laughs> so there's due to be rain, 36% chance now, I can just about hear it, light rain, then it's going up to 58% at 10 o'clock tonight, then it's going up to 81% and then 86% at midnight all the way through till five in the morning. That is gonna test this tent. In fact, beyond five in the morning, that's just like the next day's weather. I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm really giving it a baptism of fire, this tent, but it's canvas, so I figure it's gonna hold up pretty well in the rain. Don't know if you can hear that deer. Monk Jack. A bark. Get, got quite a few monk jack in this woodland. Just had the tawny owls going as well. It's lovely. It's like the epitome of a British woodland, deciduous woodland. At dusk, is that a monk jack and some tawny owls? so still tonight there's there's literally no wind whatsoever and I'm waiting for the rain which is due to be here now we're meant to be having 85% rain what is going on at least that monk jack stopped barking but yeah lovely lovely uh, quiet evening if it stays like this all night I'll sleep like a baby I've got two young kids uh, three and a, well, she's nearly four now, my daughter. And then my son is now, what's he, a 17 months old? 18, he's coming up one and a half, I think. But yeah, it's, uh, I don't get loads of sleep through the night sometimes, so coming out camping, I tend to, uh, I tend to sleep quite well. Don't tell my wife that, but yeah, if it's a still night like this with no wind or rain, I think I might end up hopefully sleeping quite good. But I also do like the sound of rain on the tent. This is just so nice to be out camping again this time of year, autumn. The leaves haven't properly changed yet. They haven't started to, the, the tips of the beech trees here, they've just started to go. I don't know why I'm looking up, it's pitch black. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to see any orange leaves up there. No. Two weeks, this woodland's gonna, no, about three weeks actually, this woodland's gonna look lovely and stunning. The rain has arrived. Yes, I ordered it to rain. Give the tent a proper test. Thing is, is, it sounds really heavy outside, but in this tent, it just doesn't sound heavy at all because it's so thick. I've also got the leaf cover above me from the trees, so it's not as um, it's not as heavy as it would be if I was camping out in the open. 
but it's nice I'm cozy there's a bit of warmth coming off the lantern it's still quite a mild night but I'm not gonna wear a jumper in the sleeping bag and that's it that's all to report folks for tonight and we will see how the tent has fared in the morning what is it now 10 o'clock 10 o'clock at night it's past my bedtime these days right I'm gonna get some sleep and I'll let you guys know how the night went tomorrow morning it's a wet one it rains solidly for the whole night at times it was really heavy sometimes a little bit light the odd sticks falling down from the trees at night which is interesting I'm in a beech woodland obviously so I'm quite wary of the branches spontaneously falling um, which beech can do but I've checked above me and there's no kind of massive overhanging branches, only small ones. It's a really it's a really peaceful morning, even though it's really wet. I didn't I slept I slept pretty good to be fair. I've got a bit of a stiff neck. I don't sleep great with those inflatable pillows. But um other than that, I, I slept really well and the, it was quite peaceful at night because of the rain. The tent has held up really quite well i'm really impressed i don't think it hasn't been properly proofed or anything so this was definitely the test um a good way of proofing canvas tents in general is actually setting them up in the dry in a sunny day spraying them down with like a water sprinkler or a hose pipe getting them soaking wet and then letting them dry again and then doing that a couple of times because what happens is where they're where, on each seam where the canvas is stitched together as with any tent, there's hundreds of or thousands of tiny little holes where the, the needle's gone in and out to stitch it. As that needle goes through the hole, it obviously leaves a bit of a gap and water can come in. So if you wet the canvas, what happens is that thread expands and tightens around the canvas, um, or the other way around, I can't remember, but essentially that then contracts and dries and eventually it expands enough that it seals the holes all together so this is part of actually sealing the canvas tent anyway but I will put some canvas proofing material on it at some point whether it's some beeswax melted down beeswax and paraffin mix or something I'm not sure um, obviously it will make it a bit heavier and, and and it won't be as supple but it will waterproof it but this is a great test look at that I'm really pleased with that very comfortable night with that raised bed as well and the sleeping bag gotta say really good really really good it wasn't cold at all but then it was a mild night but it's really comfy so i'm debating whether to have a fire or not obviously everything's soaked i didn't prep any wood last night and i kind of knew this was happening anyway so i bought with me some some kind of brioche buns and a packet of oreos I don't really feel too hungry. So I'm not sure I'm going to do a fire this morning.
<clears throat> these are just coming through I'm not sure what they are yet mushroom guys out there might know but they're just coming through they're almost they're almost spiky on the top they feel really rough they're coming through and this is all beach mushroom guys let me know what do you think very rough can't really see it underneath and they're everywhere coming through here this one's been nibbled on Welcome to my humble abode. That was bed last night and the lantern set up, whoa, a bit close. I basically just tied a bit of string around the centre ridge pole, tied a stick to that, and then I can hang my lantern straight from that. And it works really well. So I was going to have a fire, I've decided against it <clears throat> because it's the effort of obviously collecting all the wood. I haven't got too much time this morning. It's raining and it's 40 mile an hour winds tomorrow. It's raining for the next few days and it doesn't make a difference. So I was going to leave it here to dry but it's not going to dry. So I'm going to have to take it home and hang it and then put it out. Which is annoying but it is what it is. So yeah, now I've decided against the fire and we shall pack down the tent wet and it's going to weigh a ton this tent weighs nearly 10 kilos with the full kit pegs and all i think it's like 9.2 or something without it's a heavy tent it's not for lightweight backpacking i think it goes like this if you i've just had a look at I've just had a look at the back and I think it goes like this. I think each loop feeds down into the loop below it to do it up. I'm not sure on this at all. I think it goes like that and then this somehow, this loop goes through there and then through that one. This seems right and this is how you would do it up but I guess on the inside obviously that goes through there there and then through that one that's it and that's how that's how it's done up so i couldn't figure that out last night but i've just checked the back which is already done up and that seems to be the way so that's good to know how to do it up on the inside should i need to interesting loop system that i've never seen before but actually i can see the practicalities of it just feeding each loop through it I mean, look, you can see the convenience of a zip, right? Why they invented them. But this still does an alright job.
Right folks, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks so much for watching. Something slightly different and I'm looking forward to using that tent more over the coming months, throughout the colder months. It was a, t a test camp today and I'm really pleased with it. It was a test camp for the last two days. I'm really pleased with it. It's heavy GT. It's going to take a while to dry. But um, yeah, that's based on the on the British Army World War II officers' tents. Out of breath from packing it away. But thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you enjoy this type of episode, feel free to subscribe. I'll be back. Um, hoping for Monday uploads, evening time, UK, about 6pm. So hopefully I will see you guys next week. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Love the thumbs up at the end. <laughs> Nerd.